It is super responsive. It was released in 1989 and I've been having fun with one for the last few weeks. It is an A92 Corolla. This was clearly grandma or grandpa's car and I bought it unregistered from a dealer hoping to turn it into a rental car for somebody who was a bit nostalgic for the early 90s motoring. Unfortunately that plan fell through and now it's for sale but uh, let's have a look at the Corolla 1.6 automatic made in Australia in 1991. Now this was a poverty pack Corolla so it's only got a three-speed auto 1.6 litre carburetted engine which I'll give you a look at in a moment pretty Spartan inside and some cruel tricks played on us by Toyota with a blank uh, button there does nothing well it does the power locks in the uh, upper spec version and then another blank button there next to the rear window to mister that would normally operate the rear wiper in the hatch or the seeker but this being the sedan does not need that also missing from this car is air conditioning there it is and as I said only three speeds on this particular low spec model they did come with an overdrive on a higher spec and the car is showing some evidence of being serviced 2019 149 it was due and it's just ticked over 150 in the last couple of weeks while I've been driving it around now that's very low kilometers for a car this old so clearly it's been something that's sort of only been used sparingly given the nature of the uh, upholstery being in good condition, although that was covered in seat covers. <laughs> seat covers, the front seats had two sets of covers on them. Now here's another example of the penny pinching with uh, the poverty pack, is there's no taco. So the taco would normally be where the fuel and temperature is. Fuel might go where the open door warning is, and temperature might go where the Corolla signage is. I'm pretty sure from the uh, Seeker we used to own, that's where those things were. The one thing to note about A92 Corollas from this period is the interior plastics are not very durable. Or they, they're durable, but they don't seem to enjoy the climate much, and many of them will go sort of flowery, light-coloured like that has, get some marks on it. Still sort of solid enough to work, and thankfully the dash seems to be made of something different, so it does handle a lot better. But um, footwells and doors, even the door trims along there are looking very, very weathered. And you'll see here that's faded, although that's come from a wreck. I went to a wrecking yard which you can watch in another video, and harvested a couple of um, B-pillar covers off there because these ones had sort of been painted black and the paint was half coming off. You can still see some residue of it there. It sort of, it didn't look particularly good. This one I got off a later model Corolla, so it uh, scrubs up pretty well, that bit of plastic. I did find a fair bit of gravel underneath this seat. I don't know why. Maybe uh, some spilled in the boot and made its way in here, but the seat comes up really easily. There's little, little um, things to pull, tabs to pull at the front, and it lifts out, and you can vacuum easily under there. Now, the wheels on this model are low rent with uh, just some uh, plastic hubcaps on there. Now, this is a pre-facelift model. The facelift came out just a few months after this one was made, and this one does not have side repeaters there for the blinkers. That's sort of taken care of in the housing of the corner lights. This car also has Ornja, genuine Ornja, uh, headlight protectors that have a little bit of damage to them from something or other. Anyway, let's have a look under the bonnet.
Okay, the late 80s called, and this is the response. It's a carbureted engine. It's the 4AC. Uh, it's 16 valves and double overhead cams. It's about 71 kilowatts, which is not exactly hugely powerful, about um, 95 brake horsepower. But um, look, it does the job, and you know, it's um, also a non interference engine. So if anything goes wrong with the timing belt, in theory, hopefully, all those valves and pistons are okay. Now I made fun of this the day I picked it up. This was the slogan that Toyota used to have. SR meaning super responsive. Now being an automatic, being 1.6 and being a 3 speed, I wouldn't call it super responsive. You have to push your foot through the floor basically to get it to come to life. But um, look it does the job and doesn't use too much fuel, I'd say it's uh, probably getting around 7.5 to 8 litres per 100 kilometres, which ain't good by modern standards, but probably for this age, is uh, reasonable. I have had some adventures around the boot, and uh, there's a release down here, which is uh, interesting that they actually bother to give you that, but they do, which is nice. Now I've been hanging out around the back of uh, this car for a while because this tail light was a bit damaged when I brought it home. So I bought another tail light very cheaply um, and it wasn't made in Japan like these ones are, it was made in Taiwan uh, because the A92 or the A90 was uh, made around the world, uh, persisted in Australia till 1994 but uh, some other places were making it beyond that and it just uh, kept leaking we had some rain and um, the water got past also it was leaking inside the actual light so there was water filling up in there and there seemed to be some sort of opening around there so went back to the drawing board and ordered another one this one was $80 and then I put uh, some um, T-Rex uh, silicon based adhesive around it because that's what it came out looking like it was covered in um, not foam but adhesive so I put plenty of that around there and it seems I've beaten the uh, the leaks there's been no water leaking into the spare wheel this is another thing I claimed from the wreckers was um, this bit of side moulding took it off another car and glued it on with the aforementioned T-Rex we should go for a little run in this just around the block and I can show you just how it behaves which is very orderly being a Toyota about 15 years ago maybe a bit more somebody paid to rebuild the engine on this car so whether it had a radiator problem and overheated and they had to uh, redo the head, I don't know. It was rebuilt somehow and it's noted in the owner's guide. Written, Someone's written it in there that it was done at 92,000 Ks and it's just gone 150. And when I took the car to get uh, some, uh, get an exhaust leak looked at or fixed, the exhaust shop, without me prompting them, said that car looks like it's had some uh, had a new head on it. So it's also had, it seems, a few resprays. It may have had a little bit of uh, rust around the windscreen, cut back. I don't know how well, but you know, it's it's uh, intact and all good. And uh, it drives very nicely. I had the uh, the rear shocks done. It was bouncing around a bit. And reasonably quiet. I mean, if you put your boot down and you have to literally plant it to the floor to get it to be super responsive, it uh, does get a bit noisy, but here I am doing 80 and I can hear the uh, sloshes of the road more than I can hear the engine. Corolla out.